you guys are trouble. You guys are trouble. Hey, all right, everybody. Craig Martell coming to you live from the subarctic where it's light all the time because uh, that's just how it is here. Uh, today, we wanted to talk about podcasting, but that's irrelevant because what matters? Monday. It's Monday. Okay, that's for everybody out there. Um, today, we have Lauren Moore and Kayleen Williams. Say hi and where you're from, Lauren. Hey, I'm in Delaware. And uh, it is an overcast, cloudy day outside, but we're loving it. Nana's upstairs. She's just chilling, and I'm ready to go and ready to meet everyone today. Thanks for having us on the show. Sure. Kayleen? Uh, I'm from Idaho. It's currently raining, and if my pterodactyl starts squawking in the background, I do apologize. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. It's, it's, it's everything, and actually, I called uh, customer service on one of my, uh, my, one of my devices yesterday, and on their customer service message, they said specifically, most of our customer service reps are now working from home. So if you hear a child or a dog in the background, please be patient. You know, not like, oh, geez, let us know and we'll fire them. No, no, it wasn't that at all. It's like, a, this is what you're going to hear. Just get over it. You can't have animals at work. <laughs> so we're yeah, telling her, that... if you hear Nana or you hear a pterodactyl, that's life. That's a, yes, yes, a Nana. <laughs> Nana's in the, I want my, I want my porridge. Where's my figgy pudding? She's actually so, okay. got that already. We, we have a few people on already. So that means we're live because this, uh, when we cut it over to YouTube, it's whenever it goes live and you see things. So we never know exactly where it's going to start. Uh, and, and usually it's, it starts wherever I have the worst, uh, the, the most stupid of stupid faces. And that's that is my permanent Facebook for that, and YouTube for yeah, that. Yeah, no, uh, that. I love those. Like one of them, I'm like, like just for all eternity. <laughs> and and like, wonder, why that like, one? I, I I don't know. I don't remember ever getting to that point of that face. Right, it's just me. So and, quick. And, yeah, yeah. So it just shows the power of a uh, a power of a picture and a snapshot in time. You can look great 99% of the time, but when that picture snaps, there's you got stupid face going and 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 that's what everybody sees. So yeah, never trust the media when they show a picture of somebody making a stupid face or a, a an arrogant face or any that's just over the course between, of a day. We we all do all of them. <laughs> yeah, two face yeah, yeah, two face. It didn't work out too well for that one professor on Harry Potter. <laughs> So, so podcasting, talking about podcasting now that I, this isn't a podcast because it's not available, uh, audio channel only, you know, you can't cut it to iTunes and stuff like that. It's, we, we just do it live to talk about stuff with, well, that's a good uh, distinction. with the good self publishing uh, folks. Yeah. It's, we cut it over to YouTube, but gen this is for 20 bucks of 50 K for the group. They can watch it. They can see me make gestures and stupid face and, uh, We'll talk about stuff that's important to self uh, self published authors, and hopefully, in the the myriad of tendrils of our conversations, find something that's important to them that they can use. We we talk about filling up the buffet, and each uh, each indie can go through and pick and choose what they want. So today's top podcasting because there are some people who are just really good at talking and having a great conversation with other people. And me, because of 20 books, I'm able to get uh, a lot of a big variety of people on the show. And what I'm doing is incrementally going through the list of present presenters for 20 books Vegas. So eventually we'll get everybody. And then what come 20 books Vegas, they will already recognize you and already have a, a hopefully a background. Because what you can do is once we load up on SCED for, for 20 books Vegas 2020, we can copy this link in there. So anybody Ooh. who says, hey, I want to go to the podcasting panel. Oh, here's a link. We've got uh, Lauren and Kayleen talking about this. And they're moderating this panel with a bunch of other podcasters that they'll be like me and just talk all the time and never give them a chance to say anything. So I know. You can, See, you can, that's the challenge. We, we're, we're hosts who have to moderate other hosts. So it's just going to be like this like madhouse. of <laughs> We're all just going to be jiving. It's going to be a jive and it's going to be fun. And it'll be whoever you pick. So podcasting. Why did you guys pick a podcast for indies? 
we kind of got dragged into it, kicking and screaming. Yeah, That's... we fell into it like a vat of molten lava unicorn spit. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. That we were braving in order to save the ring. I don't know. I guess we should be throwing the well, ring. Well, save the yeah. Ring. But we were asked to. We were we were pled to, and it was something that neither of us are very comfortable with. We're both pretty shy people, I would say. Um, but uh, Josh, Josh Hayes saw something in us, and he he requested that we do a show. And I, I, Kaylee and I, we talked about it. We went back to Josh, and we said, "But your show is so much fun. You're such a fun guy. You and Scott, you guys have such a good time. Um, if we do one, we're gonna have to make it." educational because we've got a lot to learn uh that's not a shtick you know this is a real thing we've got a lot to learn um so we both decided yeah we would like to have a show where we talk about the next thing we want to learn we'll bring on someone who knows more than we do on that subject and we'll ask them questions because we really want to know about it we really are curious and we'll be able to share those conversations with the wider world out there um so we just did one and then one led to two and we kept at it and now What's We're in year season two. <laughs> We're still going. Yeah, yeah. the 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 Great. main the main thing is, um, I'm like, well, we need to know what we're going to talk about, because I can't just be on there and just you know staring at the screen, not having a conversation. Like you me, know. I'm taking this personally now. I'm taking <laughs> I'm this personally. Well, See, again, no. we're shy. We're shy. That's kind of how we no normally. More... So we got to prepare, right, Kayleen? Yeah, we have a whole like document that we prepare and we're just like, all right, guests, here are the questions that we have. You may navigate those and add them, change them. I don't know. Make us say weird things like Chuck that one time. He added something to the document and made me said, say a weird thing. So I was following it. But yeah, anyway. A, a document. Oh, yeah. I, I logged in <laughs> seven minutes prior to the hour and I'm like, oh, hey, there you are. Is that what you look like? Uh, make, make sure I pronounce your names correctly. That's a, that's the extent of my preparation. So, uh, but you did, which is amazing, because hardly anybody <laughs> ever does. <laughs> well, good, good. It's it's the start. It's the start of uh, life as a whole. But I really like that format of you help us to learn. And I tried to do that every time, but not with as much intentionality of hey, this is our here's what here's the subject I want to explore topic. to help make me better. I really like that. So. Hang on, we have a we have our first question already. Thanks, Elaine. <laughs> Usually first. Hang on, boop. How do I stop myself from saying "er"? I'm considering hitting myself with a hammer every time. A pitchfork in the gut is also a a, a, a powerful demotivator. <laughs> it is. Also, don't speak in public. That's another way you just uh, you <laughs> take care of it right there. And uh, you, you hear me, you hear me speak, and I have verbal ticks all over the place, and it's okay. Because this is me, when you meet me in person, this is what you get. Sometimes if I'm on a roll, I will flow more smoothly. And other times when I'm just making it up as I go, like right now, I might say uh, a few times and it's okay. Yeah. Uh, one thing you can do is you film yourself and then watch yourself and it makes you more aware. Just like reading aloud, you do it. Just like writing, you write more to practice and, and be able to write better. So speaking better, because I'm looking at myself right now and it kind of sucks, but hey, how about this, huh? How about this? It's not no nice. jowls, uh, no jowls down to 192 something today. So Ooh, I've lost 10 up. pounds since I started. Go thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Uh, <clears throat> so only, only 12 pounds to go, 12, 13 pounds to go to get to my target of 180, which that's August is my time frame to get there and definitely stay there by the show in, uh, in November. So I can uh, do better. Hauling around an extra 25 pounds is uh, is uh, problematic and a little bit hard on my heart and my my tortured lungs. So please, this is uh, this is what you get. Yeah, that's... and hopefully a lot a lot less of me come uh, come November. Yeah, that's not that's hopefully. Like the... I will make so. Go ahead, <laughs> yeah, Taylor. Craig... Sorry. Nope, over here. Craig's definitely going to do it. And that's a really good answer because at the end of the day, you have to be you. If you're not you, then who are you? You can't pretend to be somebody else. Like I actually had a question post show, like, how do you do what you do? And I'm like, I didn't understand the question. I was like, um, well, you know, I, I don't even remember what my answer was. It was something stupid. It had nothing to do with the question that he asked. And 
I was like, oh, you mean me? How do I be me? I wake up and I have coffee. Uh, but my biggest verbal take, and I'll, I'll let y'all know this, is my brain will suddenly shut off. Yeah. I would be mid-sentence and going for it, super excited, and all of a sudden I'm just, what was the question? And what the heck was I answering? And Lauren will just giggle and she'll give me a, you know, a, a cue and I'll just like, aha, I remember. And we just run with it because that's just what happens sometimes. We so roll with it. it. We <laughs> practice. Uh, my yeah. brain goes blank too, especially because like you don't think about this before you start podcasting, but I cannot hear myself speak right now. I'm talking and I sound like I'm underwater because my voice is not coming <laughs> through. Your guys' voice does. And that threw me for like a couple months of podcasting. My, whenever I'd pay attention to that, my brain would just shut down. So Elaine, I would say there's two things. Uh, one, I just said, uh, <laughs> yeah. one, I practice my opening script for the hour before the show starts. I'm getting everything ready. I'm getting my environment ready. I'm getting myself ready. And the half an hour before I'm running through my opening introduction again and again and again and again so that it comes Lauren's out way, smoothly and naturally way more prepared than me and then once and, and, we get into the conversation and get going those us disappear because of joy you're getting into it you're enjoying it you're just talking it and those us just evaporate yes yeah. it's, it's a normal conversation so why do you spend that much time preparing because my audience is worth it that's right uh, that's right maybe 15 people watching us live on a Thursday night. And I know more will watch it later and more will listen later. But even if it was just those five, 10, 15 people, they are worth it to me. They're worth the preparation. They're worth getting, you know, I spend about eight hours a week getting ready for that one show, I guess, uh, between scheduling people and picking out the topic and coming up with questions, eliciting questions. It, it takes prep, but I think, the, the group that we have on Keystroke Medium or the group that we have right here on 20 bucks, you guys are worth it. So that's what why we do what we do. And then Kayleen, you put in hours on the back end. What are some of those hours yeah. that you do? So like afterwards, that's, that's the time spent getting it to audio. So yeah. sometimes uh, the video doesn't like to want to download. <laughs> so like our last one, it took it a day and a half to let me download it. And I was getting ready to punch it in its face. Um, but it finally... If I thank you, Facebook user, you are amazing. Awesome. We amazing. Um, and then I'm ripping out the audio. I'm putting in the music, getting the opening, getting the ending track. And now I have a new toy, Alphonic, that I can make it sound even better because of narration. And this this is the post-production. So this yes, is uh, post-production. And, and, and the reason, uh, one thing that you guys do is you do this prep, you record the show. Do you, do you have a live version of the show as well, or? Yes, it is all live. Okay, but then Eastern. you do post-production for uh, the podcast upload to like iTunes and stuff like that. Yep, so we go Podbean, oh. and then that gets automatically put into the iTunes and somewhere elseville. Um, and then the people, all the people across the world can enjoy our voices. This right here, this is what you get. Yeah, talking, talking stuff and journeys and nitty gritties with the books and the writing and the things. It's great. Well, you you guys you guys come across much better. I've met Josh and Scott. I've actually worked with them both, and uh, and uh, uh, you guys are a far better face on Keystroke Medium <laughs> than those two guys. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this doesn't come up natural. Didn't wake up like this. No. <laughs> blank man look uh, the uh, <laughs> for uh, for Josh and Scott my, my son actually grew up in Wichita so uh, I went back there last summer because he came down with his uh, with his family to meet uh, to hang out with his mother for for a couple weeks and uh, so I flew to Wichita and hung out with those guys a couple different times and uh, at, and ate breakfast at their favorite breakfast joint and it was way yes. cool both both times I mean you can't you can't be and it was like dirt cheap dirt cheap to me but my parents were, were there as well and i took them and my dad almost didn't order what he wanted because it was nine dollars as opposed to what he was considered an acceptable price of six dollars for something like pancakes 
I'm like, Dad, just get what I'm paying. Just get what you want. But these are these are horrible prices. I'm like, come on to Fairbanks, man. Yeah. That same omelet will cost you $25. So, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, when Dad got it, I'm like, is it good? He's like, yeah, it's really good. Is it better than what you usually get? Well, yeah, but. No, no, yeah, but. No, but. <laughs> you, Stop right there. <laughs> you, you, you pay for better. If you want a $6 omelet, you're going to get a $6 omelet. Wichita, Kansas. It was a a great visit and great to see those guys in their in their native habitat. Uh, I I even uh, went out to Josh's house and saw his incomplete deck. And a year later, I could go there and see the same incomplete deck. I, I believe so. It's complete a now. Jab, I believe it's at, complete. I bl no, it's not. <laughs> I asked him just last week, and he's like, "Nah, I really need to get out there and finish that thing." Oh, it's Josh, close. you have lied to us, liar. It's close. It's really close. I mean, he can use it. And when I got there, they had just finished closing it in and stuff like that. So getting to, to put up the uh, the TV, it, it's really close to being finished. But just that final bit. Come on, man. Come on, man. Get it done. <clears throat> all right. Uh, got all them words to write, man. Podcasting. Mm -hmm. The uh, <clears throat> So this morning, yeah, what was I doing an hour pri prior? I was writing words. I got over a little over a thousand words already today. Awesome. It's uh, it's six fifteen here my time, but the uh, <clears throat> I, I have to write. I have to get those words before I come on the, on the show. Otherwise, after the show, usually I jump on Facebook. I answer some of the com comments from the show. Then I have to go out and do dishes and get stuff set up for the day. And then when my wife gets up, I stay up with her for a little while. And so I usually don't get back in the chair till like nine. So I got to get those thousand words because then it makes my my target of hitting 2,500 words by noon uh, achievable. If I wait right. till start till till 10, then I'm really hosed because at that point in time, I'm getting a lot of messages like uh, the, the 20 books. Indie, well, the 20 books indie grant, I'll get those. Hey, here's the most recent messages. Thank you, Ken Dry, for, for filtering a lot of the emails. And then she just sends me, hey, here's the, here's the ones in a spreadsheet. And I hit them, send the money dive over maybe, maybe make an update on facebook in the group about hey here's how many here's how many donations we've received here's how much how much we've uh, dispersed and then do contract stuff i've got two different two different anthology box sets going right now one mm -hmm. is an anthology that will publish in september the other one is the 20 book pack say, uh, the space opera 20 book pack which launches wednesday we had to get the final elements of that uh, sorted and it's pretty good to go. But now rallying the masses to push that forward. So all of these other things, that always pops up between like nine and noon when I'm back in the chair ready to write. And uh, I, I usually just take care of things right away because uh, I get so many emails and so many messages that if I don't deal with it right away, it gets buried and then I forget all about it. Right. And sometimes even if I write it down, it gets buried and <laughs> I write a lot of stuff down too. I've cut so, post-it notes everywhere for that very reason. Yep. Podcasting. The, uh, <laughs> the so so we're back. So somebody somebody is thinking about, gee, should I start a podcast or not? What recommendations would you make to make sure it's a right fit for them? So I can drink my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you definitely have to enjoy. Like, if you're going to do it alone, you need to enjoy talking. Like, if you are mostly silent and you don't really like talking. Like it took me a long time to get used to the sound of my own voice because I don't like the sound of my own voice, but other people seem to dig it. So there we go. Um, but I found that with the right people, I can actually hold a very, fairly decent conversation. Um, and it's quite enjoyable, especially with Lauren up here. She, she rocks it. She rocks it with her socks on and off both ways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, oh, definitely. Big. God, gigantic <laughs> Kayleen head. Um, yeah, yeah, and be able to talk. I guess unless you do a sign language one, I have never seen a sign language YouTube. They're out there. They are out podcast. there. They are. Okay. Podca now oh, we I have a problem with a podcast part of it, but the YouTube yeah. side is fine. <laughs> A sign language blog, yeah. Unless, ooh, yeah. it would be the opposite. Somebody would then narrate. Ha ha ha! There you go. Okay, sorry, I just totally went off the track. That's you kind of love what you're doing. That's that's huge yeah. because you, we're not getting paid for this, you know. Um, so you got to have some reason to keep doing it week after week, and and week after week, putting off other 
things, right? Other duties, other things that you'd like to do. Uh, when consistency is so key to building an audience and building an audience is hard. Um, so we hard. thought, when we thought, <laughs> when we first started the show that our audience would just kind of like shoot up, right? Because we're getting out more content consistently. Um, it's been going up pretty steadily, but you know, slower than we thought. So when numbers aren't rewarding you and you're not being rewarded by a salary, um, you got to have another kind of reward that keeps you going and keeps you excited. And um, that's going to be the topic that you love. Yeah, it's going to be the audience, even like I said, even if it's 15 people, even if it's 10 people. Um, but if you love what you're doing, then that's that's going to carry you through. Like for us, like I said, Keely and I, we are actually learning. We've got a lot of stuff to learn. Um, I'm an editor, so is Kayleen. She's also a narrator. And we have things in this industry that we are studying. And with this platform, we're able to bring on guests who can teach us a whole lot more. And then uh, we can share that learning with everyone. So it's an opportunity for our guests. It's a huge opportunity for us, opportunity for our audience. And we're all doing it together. Yeah. And exactly. Facebook user, just because you're shy does not mean you cannot be a podcaster. You can absolutely be a podcaster if you're shy. I am notoriously shy. Around the right people, I become this magical <laughs> entity of Kayleen. I don't know what happens. I, the camera starts and bam, there she is. That's, that's at, at 20 Books Vegas, I, I see everybody and I, I'm, I'm perfectly happy in my house having almost no contact with humanity. But I get to 20 Books Vegas, and it's completely different. I mean, seeing you guys, because I saw you guys, and it's like, okay, I've never seen you before, but I know you. And it's instantly, hey, how's that podcast going? Keystroke, where's my sweatshirt? I mean, the typical questions you get. Uh, I I do have a Keystroke right. medium sweatshirt. Thank okay. you. So, yes. so if you get in with the right people and do the right things, you're going to get – the right stuff out of it and that's a that, that that's a good sweatshirt so i still wear it i wore it from the show uh, back in 2018 i believe and i and and you guys seen the picture of me with the keystroke medium t-shirt on on at 2017 because josh Super was one of the first people that came josh and scott um <clears throat> the uh, uh relating to people the thing with a podcast is your interaction with people is limited to your interaction with yourselves because yeah, you see comments, and if you have a guest, you're just having a conversation. You can you can push all that to the side, and it's just you talking with another person, asking them, "You're you're you're good at this. Please help me understand." And everybody gets to listen to that conversation. So if you can tune them out, then you're great. My my wife is a a notorious introvert, but she's a university professor. When she gets up in front of her class. It's a different persona, and she just loves sharing that knowledge of linguistics. Hey, here's here's this topic, and I love this, and let's talk about this. And it's a completely different persona. Get on a stage in front of a, a conference of her peers, and it's a different thing. Podcasting, don't think because you're an introvert or just because you might be shy, uh, a different word for it, that you can't do podcasting. So exceptional podcasters are are, are shy and some exceptional public personalities are, are shy and really awkward in a one-on-one -on -one situation with a stranger, whereas they come across as the life of the party every other time. Yeah, so when you get in there and, that you just haven't met yet, and yeah, this yeah. would be the opportunity for you to do that. Sorry, thank yeah, you. So, no, you're good. When you jump on and you just start going, then you know yeah. it just it it vanishes. I don't know where Shy Kayleen goes, but she's over there sipping coffee, having chocolate, and I'm jealous. I want that chocolate, but I've got to talk, and we're gonna do that thing. So. Yep, yep, and keep people going. Uh, Dean had a question here. As an author, what topics would you suggest for a podcast? Ooh, that's a good one. So we went um, broadly. Beam. Theme. Your theme first. What, theme. what would you recommend for a theme for the podcast? Um, well, there's okay. Let me. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There could be many. Our theme is to dive deep on a singular topic. So, I mean, we've talked about um, setting. We've talked about. Um, we've actually even talked about finances. We've you know we we get down to a deeper topic so we can delve deeper than usually does if that made any sense at all um there's also podcasts out there they just want to talk to other authors 
They want to know how your process works, how you get from um, idea to outline, to writing, to um, delivery. Uh, Lauren, save me. <laughs> I'm a former English teacher, so I think in units, right? When I plan my curriculum for the year, I break down that year into two units. So uh, as the writer's journey, we'll pick a unit like bus the business side of writing. And then I'll come up with a list of all the possible topics that could relate to that and um, what people want to know, what I want to know, certainly, what the people in future medium want to know. And then I will find an expert who can answer that. I found them on LinkedIn. I found them on Twitter. I found them on Facebook. And usually people are uh, pretty uh, excited or happy, honored, you know, to be asked on a podcast. I know that they're sharing their time. You know, I'm, I'm respectful of that. But I, I'm not worried about reaching out or just a little bit worried about reaching out and annoying them <laughs> with my requests. But I keep my email short and find someone who I can plug into that exact topic. Uh, so right now we've been going through author tools. Uh, we've been doing that for the last month and a half. We've been transitioning into more of what's happening right now in the industry during COVID-19, during the lockdowns, during the shutdown. How is that affecting the industry? Because everyone wants to know that. And I, we want to know that too. So I've been reaching out to people on Twitter to, and LinkedIn again to, to bring them on the show to give some answers to shed some light on what's happening right now. So, so Dean Kuntz, more for the, sorry, Greg. I, I, would, I would say your theme, because it started with Josh and Scott, they called it keystroke medium, the medium of the written word. So, mm -hmm. and you have, your theme is your learning journey. Right. So this is, so a theme is the big thing. How you break that down, units, mm -hmm. here's a six week block or two month block. Here's a day to day. My theme for the CNM show, we've always just indies, However, for this series of daily shows, it's been about prepping for 20 Books Vegas and keeping people excited because all the guests, almost all the guests are speakers at 20 Books Vegas, as you guys will moderate a panel on spot, on podcasting. But I didn't give you guys credit. I gave Keystroke Medium because that's your that's your online persona for your podcast. So okay, the uh, so the theme, the theme, learning journey, Keystroke as a medium. It's uh, it, it's great because you see other podcasts, the fantasy authors podcast, the uh, the business of writing that I do with that Joe Solari does. And I'm, I'm a frequent guest on that one. Business of right. There it is. There's the theme. So yeah. when you start a podcast, make sure you understand here's what here's what I want to convey and what this will be about, because people mm -hmm. have, as Lauren said, be respectful of their time. If you're like a writer, a, a show for all indies, kind of like like my arrogance with the CNM show. People want to come see our show because I'm Craig Martell. And they that's do. bullshit. It's, it's, <laughs> no, it's, they do. It's, it's, what is the focus of the show? Because on this one, you'll see I put the name. Hang on. There. And just so you know, Craig did a much better job. No, he's over here. Much better job. Uh, and I just lost my thought. There it goes. There it goes. Uh, commemor not commemorating. Anyway, what I was right. saying. He did, he said it better. The so getting your show, just making sure. So so if somebody's browsing, they go onto iTunes because you actually upload on iTunes and they're browsing. Make sure it's something that might be obvious but pithy, because they don't have oh. a lot of screen space for that. Titling. So, so, yes. So, we spend a lot of time thinking about titles. And that's important if you're going to do a podcast as opposed to, hey, here's Craig talking about various shit related to indies. And if that's the title of your podcast, it's it. you have to already have an audience for that to be successful. But if you're trying to get one just off that name or people share it, think you might want to think twice about that. So theme, here's the general theme within which these topics will reside. So the fantasy authors podcast. Hey, guess what? If you're a fantasy, urban fantasy galore, or whatever it might be, so just understand. That's what I. That's what I meant with with theme. That's what I was fishing for. I, I failed mightily with my question, but you guys talked about then the next level down, which is now how do we break the show up to make every episode as valuable as possible? Because it's our time. You said you spend about eight hours a week prepping for. That's your time that you're not getting paid for, but what you're getting is you're giving yourself an education on your self-publishing journey, as well as as your editing journey, all of the stuff that you guys do to, to support 
and forward your own careers, you're, you're learning for free relative your investment of your time. It's time or money. That's uh, that's the two investments. Okay. So. And I oh, don't want you to feel like I. Oh no, we'll do that one first. Do guests ever expect to be paid? How do you manage their expectations? I've never run into a guest who thought they were going to be paid um, because, you know, the, well, Lauren would probably know more. She, she's, she's a freaking network wizard. Um, yeah. I shoot them an email and I explain exactly what the show is and that question hasn't come up. Yeah. We're going to so. be having a conversation. Do you want to come on and have this conversation with our audience? It will be live. It will also be stripped down into audio. Um, and yeah, really the only turn down we have is for people who don't want to be live. That's, okay. that's been the major turn down that we've had because not everybody wants to have their face showing and they're like, Oh, I thought this was not going to be alive and then it's going to be cut and produced and no, thank you. Um, so that has happened. Um, but for the most part, People are really excited, you know, just be able to talk a, a topic that they know so much about and it's a way to get um, it out there. And really quick before we switch things, Dean Kutzler, I did not forget about you. Was He was thinking more for the readers than you need to think as a reader for, for what you would want your theme to be. Is it going to be, you know, you read science fiction and fantasy. What's, what's the book of the month? Maybe you do a book of the month where uh, you and your audience read a book um, and then you can start talking about it because we have a lot of live audience interaction. Um, are you going to be doing book and movie reviews? Um, are you going to be, um, you know, talking to, to different authors so that the readers can interact with them? And, you know, that's how um, uh, Josh and Stock Scott got started, was talking with other authors so that the readers could find them and, and know more about them. Um, so yeah, definitely take it from a reader perspective. What you as a reader, would want to know and watch. That's great advice. Thanks, Kayleen. Yeah, I think when people are coming up with a theme, they often want to pick something that's um, niche, something that's original. And Don't try to be original. The, the thing about originality is it can be difficult when you're in the middle of actually running that podcast to keep up with that original theme, to keep finding those guests. It becomes more and more difficult to actually do the podcast itself. And that's where podcasts come and go. They just can't stick with it. The number one podcast in the world, I believe, is Joe Rogan's show. And that's just having a conversation about all kinds of things with all kinds of guests, but he loves it. And that joy is infectious, and that's why people keep on tuning in. So definitely, it's great to come up with something that's niche, but make it something that you love and that it'll be kind of downhill to actually produce that show, to make it happen, and to run it. And not something that you're constantly having to work at to make it succeed. Stay flexible. And Jenna Marecki said the exact same thing. When she tried a YouTube channel that was not her, it, it suffered. But when she just said, I'm, I'm going to be me, I'm going to swear, I'm going to talk about this stuff. She has a great yeah. stage presence. She has yeah. a great approach. Six 10-minute YouTubes a, a, a month. It takes her a week full time to produce those. But this is money generating for her on YouTube. So part of your theme is understand your target audience. If you're doing it for fellow indies, you're not getting paid generally. If you're doing it for your readers, your payment is they pick up and read your books. I like the book of the month. Hey, this is you know sci-fi readers extravaganza. I mean, that's your podcast, but it's because you love it. Uh, romance read, uh, Western romance like none other podcast. And it's because you love it. And you talk about books, you talk about that, but know your target audience. And that's part of the theme. So so that is a great point that Kayleen made is you've got to look at it as, as your target. And one of the three points I made in regards to your business, the third point was, what are you good at? So if you if you have a horrible stage presence, like, like Lauren, I like Lauren's stage presence because she's like everyone's favorite granddaughter. <clears throat> so... This is yes. I, I mean, so. So how do you how do you turn her down? Hey, I'm Kaylin. I'm I'm Lauren Moore, and I'd really like to do. Uh, could you join our, our show? Uh, who's going to turn that down? Oh man, I, my granddaughter asked. I guess I'll go to the store and get eggs and, and potato chips, and drop them off on my way home. I mean, this is this is what this is what you do. And then Kayleen out there, a narrator's voice. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> none of nobody likes the sound of their own voice. No, but they're all fine. All. It's like because uh, people tell me, "Hey, I, I now that I've listened to you on the show, I hear you 
in your books. I'm like, oh crap, is that a good <laughs> thing or a bad thing? So, so podcasting. Um, <clears throat> Sometimes I need to, I need the reminder to get myself back on. Uh, what are we talking about? The, the uh, train so know your audience, break it down, prep time. Are you going to do one a week? The frequency, if you love it, like a daily show, like I'm doing here, don't do that unless you're really committed and you're going to make it and you're going to make it happen. And this is, I, I always tell people under promise and over deliver. I promise this, hey, I'll do a daily show during this, but I'm getting absolutely murdered on my internet this month. So uh, I, I'm going to cut down and probably only do three a week uh, moving forward just because I'm absolutely getting murdered. Have you ever heard of anybody getting a $3,000 internet bill? Uh, that's me this month. I was it's, 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 it's the 18th, and I think we're already at almost $2,000 in overage charges. So uh, this is most cut, expensive we're, podcast we're, ever. <laughs> we're, we're cutting down. Yeah, you shouldn't have to pay. Not too much. Uh, I'd love to invest the time. I'm happy investing the time. But uh, yeah, that's money that can't go to uh, the 20 books uh, indie grant and stuff like that. But neither here nor there. I'm doing it. And, and there's no way I'm not going to do it. But we'll just cut the frequency back just a hair and uh, make sure that we can tell people here's what day of the week it is and have great guests to talk about topics that are important. Uh, podcasting, once you get into it, what are some pitfalls to avoid? Don't do a frequency as you're saying that's going to burn you out. Um, if, if going every day and you're just like for the love of everything, you know, try and try and tone that back. You know, we, we go once a week. Um, and the only weeks that we've missed is because of holidays. So uh, if they happen to fall, I mean, we've actually done, what was it like the day after Thanksgiving we had one? Cause that's when the, no, uh, oh no, we did one on, did we do Thanksgiving? Anyway, I'm blah, blah. Um, yeah. but yeah, frequency, you need to be able to keep up with yourself. Um, don't, don't try yourself out. Ew, good question. Basic equipment. Um, you definitely need like headphones and some kind of microphone. I actually have a more professional microphone because of my narration, um, if you don't want to sound grainy and kind of, rah, 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 um, look into different, <laughs> look I do into sound effects too. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I know. So yeah. Welcome to my, welcome to K KSM TWJ. That's what I do. Sound effects. All right. Do this. Um, microphones, look into microphones. You don't have to spend a million dollars on one. I got a blue Yeti. It was like $110, um, and has amplified the, the texture of my voice the way it sounds and how it comes through to your end. Um, but yeah, it- Amazon yeah. Prime Day, look at Amazon, put what you want, cause that's coming probably in July, I, it, or maybe, maybe not, I don't know about COVID, but last year, the Blue Yeti was on sale and that was an, an amazing buy. You could, yeah. you could get their lower end one, 110 bucks and you got a yeah. nice microphone. That's like cutting edge. Yeah, yeah, I love, I love my Yeti. It's gorgeous and it makes me sound wonderful. Um, but yeah, definitely headphones because you don't want to have a feedback loop um, because you can, if you don't have the headphones in, then the, whatever microphone you're using, if it's external, um, your computer is going to pick that up and then you're going to, and then you're going to, it's just going to be this never ending double loop. Chaos. Of, of, yeah, it's bad. And I just use the camera that's on my computer that comes with it. I mean, you don't have to get like an external camera. You know, Josh has his whole like, you know, man cave of computers and external vid bits with a box and all these buttons. But um, yeah, it's, it's just toys. It's man toys because man he lives toys. in a housing community and, and and shooting your guns off the back deck is really frowned on. So he bought well, video equipment instead. He, he balances it out with his dolls. Ah, I got you, Josh. I know you're listening. Um, so, yeah, video. <laughs> Microphone, headphones, definitely need those three things. And then Josh also pays, well, Keystroke Medium, um, but sometimes Josh, honestly, yeah, also pays for hosting on the YouTube ah. side for the number of, for our channel. And then Good. also for uh, getting the stuff up on Podbean. But Craig, you were talking about authors just host, hosting uh, a show to their own readers. I think that's a really good idea. You just start with a weekly Facebook Live and then Facebook sends out pushes notifications for those Facebook lives and just start talking to your readers. As long as you do it as a regular thing, people start to expect it. They start to look forward to it. 
And that could be the beginning of a really great podcast or something simple like that, where you're, you're practicing getting used to, used to the routine, to being responsive to your audience. And that, that could be something that who knows where that could go. Yeah. Like I was doing um, Kayleen's story time every Monday morning um, and then COVID hit. And now my mom and my daughter are home and it's loud in here. There's a pterodactyl, there's a dog running around and I haven't done a, a Kayleen story time and I miss it so much. And I am going to get back into it once I refigure this new routine from the wrench that got thrown into it. Um, but yeah, yeah. What Lauren was over here was saying. Yeah, something simple like that does not require any extra equipment. Yep, I just go on, uh, but I, I still stream through StreamYard to get to the okay. Facebook. I could probably just do Facebook Live. I never even, I'm just so used to going on to StreamYard. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> what I do. I, I, even, even when I go solo, I still use Be Live because it's just, I get all the comments, I'm used to it. I could yeah. do Facebook Live and Michael did that last uh, week when he uh, took Thursday. Mm -hmm. And uh, just did Facebook Live, and that that's cool. It's it's know the available tools to you that you can use. Streamyard, how much does that cost? There's um, a free it, version. There is a free version. You get like the little duck man up in the corner, um, and then I think it's like I want to say like no more than twenty five dollars a month. Please do not quote me on that. Go do your research. Um, yeah. But it's not a whole terrible much. Like enough that Keystroke Medium's able. Um, able to pay for it in all of our endeavors, and that's and that's Josh. They they that's, they front a lot of money for. They do. That. They're. I love you guys. Josh and Scott. Yeah. The paid version streams both the Facebook and YouTube. That's why we went it, with the paid version. Yeah. But there was a free version of it that was uh, enough for why we were using when we were trying it out because we we were doing Google Hangouts and then they did away with Google Hangouts. So then it was like three weeks of what are we going to use? <laughs> what are we doing this week? Um, and then we settled on StreamYard just because of its versatility. We can go to Facebook now and reach those users. We can go to YouTube. <clears throat> and there's actually like a whole plethora of platforms that you can stream to simultaneously um, with the paid version. So something to keep in mind. If you're going to be doing it consistently, seriously, you want to do this year after year, um, after you've gotten your feet wet and kind of figuring out what you're doing, um, I couldn't recommend StreamYard enough because it's fairly, it's simple. Well, it also and, good Twitch. and if you want to make money off of your podcast, Twitch has huge opportunities that Keystroke hasn't tapped, um, but there are a lot of podcasters making money off of Twitch. So that's something to also research and look into. And being able to podcast simultaneously to Facebook and YouTube, <clears throat> it saves you a step. And also then YouTube, if you build up enough subscribers, now you can start running ads and it becomes a revenue generator. Even if nobody ever clicks on the ads, you still can, it, at least it has the potential because uh, maybe those ads do provide something that somebody's looking for. Yeah, so, we're so close. We're like all, close. all good for, what do, what do you need, 10,000 subscribers? You only need a thousand to start hitting oh, the. To, it's that's like the, the, <laughs> the minimum, right? The yeah. you only need a, you need a thousand subscribers, and we're like I think maybe seventy away, seventy or less away from that. Jeez, we we have we have two thousand subscribers for the uh, the CNM show or the the twenty books of fifty k channel. Oh, I see how it is. <laughs> I see how it is. You're but just we, gonna, we you're just gonna blast your two thousand subscribers. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we never look to monetize though. I mean, that's one of the things with twenty books to fifty k. Even though, yes, it wouldn't hurt to have a little extra kitty of of cash to pay for things like a three thousand dollar internet bill. But I'm getting taken care of. I, I I use affiliate links for the the self publishing formula, all through twenty books to fifty k. I take all of that money Ooh, and I plow back. Yes. So it's okay. It's not affiliate uh, links. Although, yes, although I'd great. like to cut that down, but it's it's okay. Because uh, I, I am uh, I am well taken care of. Michael takes great care of me as well. Anything I need to promote, Michael's like I'll I'll show I'll send it to all my readers. So we're we're good. So, but but what it, you just uh, said affiliate links um, on our show, we always have like a sponsor or a spotlight, and okay. that has an affiliate link. And we're not shy about that. You know, you click it if you buy it or don't buy it, or you are still on um, the Amazon and you go and buy something else, those tiny little pennies actually help us to pay for things like the Streamyard and the Podbean. Um, 
and and then you know someone gets a little spotlight of their book read by me yeah. if it's on the writer's mm -hmm. journey or by josh if it's on keystroke medium you definitely want to be on the writer's journey no offense josh you're amazing <laughs> <laughs> shots fired but, uh, hey, yeah 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 stay on after we get done i'll see what i can do uh, I, i'll buy a sponsorship of some sort because you guys are great and and you have almost a thousand subscribers heck, so heck. <laughs> i wonder how close we are actually <clears throat> Okay, cool, you, cool. You, the, uh, talk. For uh, for podcasting, once again, post production. What does post production look like? So, of course, that's a Kayleen question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so, hey, talk while I'm. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, he's totally going to be talking for about three. No, 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 he asked me a very specific question. Um, so, post production, <laughs> once YouTube has done their processing of the video, I can download it. And then I go into Premiere on Adobe and I strip all the audio away from the video. I save that as an MP3 and then I take that and I put that MP3 into Audacity. And in Audacity, I already have my opening music and my ending music that I have remastered to, you know, start quiet, get loud, and then start quiet and get loud at the end. Um, and then quiet back down at the beginning. Anyway, um, get that all pieced back together, save that. Then I go into Podbean, load that file into Podbean, get all the titling right, and I am very specific on my titles. We have four shows going on right now that get loaded into the into uh, the Podbean. There's um, the, the live KSM, um, which is this one here, live. Um, there's the Writer's Journey, TWJ. There is uh, the CNN show, which is Coffee and Concepts with Walt Robillard. And then the occasional storytelling by Josh Gayu. Um, and each one of those, I have a specific way of titling them because I want people to visually be able to see the difference in the titles. They also each own, all have their own little like uh, uh, Podbean sticker that I put up with them. They have their descriptions. I get that all loaded and hit publish. And that usually finally. can take me anywhere. Yeah, and finally, that can usually take me anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and a half, sometimes two hours. It depends on the length of the show and how long it takes YouTube to um, do their processing. So like that one writer's journey show took me two and a half days because it wouldn't <laughs> process the download for me to download. So then I had to wait, which then threw everything else off because there's Monday, Monday evening, the Thursday, there's sometimes Tuesday, and then there's the Friday, Saturday. Ugh, if one doesn't download, then it throws everything else off, which is fun. So it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, so steps. What, uh, what podcasts do you guys listen to? Well, um, I listen to Joe Rogan's podcast and um, Sam Harris, uh, Waking Up, he's Waking Up podcast. And um, I was listening to a lot of writers podcasts for like three years. I love Joanna Penn's. I love Six I Figure. Big Joanna Penn. Yeah, Six Figure artist, uh, author. Um, I love the self publish the self publishing guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, and writing excuses. Lots of fantastic podcasts out there. There are. It's almost no limit. I mean, we'd like to list them, but there's so many. And uh, Joe Penn is always recommended. Lindsay Baroker's new show is, is recommended. She did one for a while, and she just restarted, I believe, doing six a, uh, a six-figure author, yes. And uh, 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 self-publishing formula, uh, Mark. Theirs is very yes. professionally done. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, Hank Garner was that is that the one Hank, Hank Garner does yeah, one yeah, Hank, good. Hank Hank actually had he de had Dean Koontz on I mean he gets some very very high level guests because this is what he mm -hmm. does he records anywhere from two to five a day and I think he's already hit like a thousand episodes that he's done I know I he sponsored him when he was at a show uh, and sponsored him so he could continue recording podcasts at the show targeting grabbing uh uh, high-end authors as uh, they appeared and say, hey, can I let me do an uh, impromptu, like 15-minute cuts. So that uh, that was way cool, and that's him. That's what he does. So uh, you, you can't miss when you find the right podcast because you don't have to – it's one of those things you can listen to it while cutting the grass 
I mean, you get the, the Bose noise canceling headphones and funnel in. Uh, that's actually law school. Uh, going through law school, I studied most of my lessons listening while cutting the grass and doing other things while walking the dog. Be listening to those lessons as well as all the online stuff and uh, and reading. I had to read some like hundred thousand pages of case law. Re really, really exciting stuff there. <clears throat> but hey, it's the, the price of admission. Oh yeah, who's oh, sexy? Um, <clears throat> so it's it, it's it's things you can do, and that's the benefit of a podcast. It's a benefit of uh, having audio for your books. People can do it while doing other things. If you count on them just to read. Well, then you might be targeting a demographic where who has a limited reading time or a uh, uh, an older demographic who has more reading time. So just understand your target audience and your potential for making magic with your words and making revenue off your words. So if you podcast, if you do a, a, a live video, the potential there is if you're looking for a revenue stream, even if it's only to offset your production costs, YouTube, 1,000 subscribers, and then you can start advertising. You can start doing those things to generate a little bit. Patreon, have you have you guys uh, talked to anybody who's done Patreon for a, uh, a podcast or a show of any sort? So I can't remember. We did a Kickstarter one, but not a Patreon. Um, okay. We should probably write that down. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I've, I've seen Patreon popping up more and more, especially when it comes to like for the rabid fans of your work. You know, it's I'm just I'm just going to put in my two cents for it right here. Um, the rabid fans of your work. It's I mean, that it's a it's a great thing to look into. So, yeah. Even Courtney at Book Funnel was talking about ways of doing business differently, yeah. uh, having your streams of income look differently from just relying only on Amazon. And how book funnel could be used to integrate with different platforms like that, like Patreon. Oh yeah, he did say that, didn't he? Yes. But a lot of people shy away from Patreon because they've got that initial like instinctual response to asking for money. They just kind of like push back against that feeling when it comes to themselves. Kind of like your dad at the restaurant who's like, No, I can't buy that dish for nine bucks. And you're like, No, it's just dad, pancakes. <laughs> it's just nine dollars, right? So some people feel like that when it comes to the idea of asking for money, like, no, I can't do that. But when you look at yeah. a friend who's got a product that they've put, you know, blood, sweat and tears into, and you know, it's fantastic. You'd say, of course you can ask for a dollar a month or something on Patreon. Of course you can. So it's something where like for someone else, you know, you, you'd say that's a great idea, but for yourself, you might not think about it. I think a lot of people find themselves in that boat. I know Lindsay Baroque, she has a Patreon for her, her uh, podcast channel, mm -hmm. and she has a page, uh, uh, SPF has a Patreon for their <clears throat> show. It's, it's okay. I mean, it's not something yeah. just for the high-end authors, as long as you temper that approach of, because the absolute first thing is, here's the, here's the buy-in. You have to pay to be a subscriber on Patreon. And if you're doing a separate reading, you can have a private Facebook group where you're only invited and you're only there as long as you're a Patreon subscriber. And hey, I'm reading chapters out of the book that I'm currently writing. For for the super fans, that is worth the that is worth gold. So five dollars a month, ten dollars a month. Uh, Dakota Kraut has a five hundred dollar status where he will come to your town and take you to dinner. And that's, uh, you know, there there are levels, there are things you can do. And he said he's never had one. Michael Andrew almost did it, but his wife stopped him. <clears throat> but Don't just, be to make, <laughs> just to make Dakota come to Vegas and uh, and feed him dinner. It's not like Dakota doesn't come to Vegas anyway and feed us dinner, but it's uh, <clears throat> just something. But but Patrick, looking at that as a revenue stream, if you're going to if you're going to take the time, especially like uh, Lauren and Kayleen do, to make a professional product, even as amateurs, because they're not getting paid for it, but you can get a revenue stream to at least offset your costs. So it's no longer a hobby. It's no longer a hobby where you just pay money out of your pocket for, like uh, golf or, uh, or or RC airplanes. Those are those can eat a lot of your money. <clears throat> so Josh McDonald's. <laughs> Josh, Josh's deck. Um, <clears throat> But Josh gave me barbecue stuff. I'm not going to give Josh a hard time because I love barbecue, as I've had some uh, last night. The uh, <clears throat> but pot, connecting connecting with your fans, 
Once you started podcasting, did you change how you did business because of feedback? My, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say my, my perception on where I was going um, business wise for my author career, you know, is, is constantly doing this now. Like I, I was just like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm like, Oh, but I could also do this. And Oh, that's how I can, can sneak that into there. Um, yeah. Constantly evolving. I should say it's yeah. Yeah. When we started out the show <laughs> with the writer's journey, we were thinking about what are the steps to writing a book? Uh, let's go through that whole process, you know, unit by unit, right? But as we got along with the show, quickly we, we decided that what we really want to do is give the audience the information they're looking for. <laughs> uh, not necessarily the information that we need to know in the correct chronological order, but what do people want to know right now? And I think that's the main focus on Keystroke Medium and especially on the writer's journey is we're looking for what, what do people need? What do people want? Let's just get it for them because we can, right? It's not everyone that can just reach out to the CEO of Perfected and, and say, let's have a conversation, spend She's an hour time with us. Um, but if our audience needs that information, if they want that information, now I can take that to Daniel Human at Perfected and I can reach out and we have a conversation and it's great, we learn something. Um, so, yeah, our show has become very responsive, and that is our happy place. That's great. And that's also I, part I, of our theme <clears throat> is audience in, uh, participation, if I could talk. Okay, there we go. Okay. That's great. And that's, a, that's an approach you just refine. So, yeah, don't get married to your own ideas. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's very important, especially being flexible and, and going with the flow to deliver a better product. Uh, I mean, that's what we do writing books. We deliver a better product, finding bigger and bigger audiences who like our books and then keeping the people who like our books happy, just like covers, just like podcasts, the same, but different. You want it the same, but it needs to be different to hold their, to hold their attention. So this is what you're doing with your books. This is what you do with the podcast. Uh, you don't want to be so far out there that uh, nobody can relate. And that's a lot of people get, get wrapped up in that. Uh, my niche is unicorn vampires in space who are philanthropists. And it's like uh, Doctors Without Borders. And you're like, what the hell are you talking about? But that's my story. I don't care about your story. Who is going to like that story? Is it urban fantasy readers? Is it science fiction readers? Is it paranormal? Is it romance? That is genre equals marketing. Same thing with podcasts. You need to need to hit that biggest audience possible. Don't narrow yourself into a, into a small, small box where you can't get out of it. You want to get that big audience first, and then the people will self-select away from your product, and that goes for your books, that goes for your podcast, until you find that audience. But you want to approach it to appeal to as many people as possible first. And if you get that wrong, then you get a lot of one-star reviews or you just get no sell-through or you get no uh, no subscribers like Jenna Marecki did. She's like, I, I just can't find any traction, but and it's really annoying. I don't like doing it this way. She changed how she approached and then she took off because, hey, you got to, this is original. This is real. She loves what she's doing. Joe Rogan, I, I love listening to him just because he's yeah. passionate about this. And that's what people tell me. Hey, you're passionate about it. I love this. I love doing indie stuff because it, we are in control of our destiny. We are in control of all the actions we need to be successful. If you write a book one and nobody buys book two, there's a problem with book one. You can go back and fix it or you can go back and write a different book one in a different series and start over because you're in control. You got to find how do you find the beta readers? You're in control. Find those who are in your genre, understand biggest genre possible. All of these things to manage your business. How you react to things is 100% in your control. What you do moving forward is 100% in your control. What you can't control is whether somebody buys your book, but you know what? You can influence the holy hell out of that from the start because you can do the things the same cover, but different the same blurb, but more engaging and different. And the the uh, a three line style. So you set that hook and they're clicking buy now off the above the fold. 
all of that stuff, you're improving your chances. And if you've gone to craft school, as in you've read a lot of books in this genre, uh, we, we talked to uh, Elena Johnson. When she started, got into Western romance because she loves it, she read, and she told me, she said, I read every book I could find that was Western romance before she started writing it. And like, you know, like 50, 60 books she read and analyzed them and said, here's the theme that's in every single one. Here's this, here's, here's the flow. And so when she started writing, needless to say, her first book was a hit and, and it's only gotten bigger from there because she nailed the genre and she loves writing it. So understand this is how you control yourself and your business as an indie. And if you're podcasting, it's because like, like me, hey, you like talking about this subject. Me, I mean, if I had to go on and interview people about COVID-19, I'd, I'd curl up and die. It's like, no, let's, let's write a book and let's sell that dang, that damn thing. So this is, and, and let's get it edited. Let's get a, a great cover on it. Let's look at the covers and get one exactly like those, except completely different. And and those things to, to move forward with your business because you're in control. And if it doesn't work this month, you change it next month. If you're in trad pub, you change it next year. So uh, let's not do that. Let's do what we can control now and get that revenue flowing, get you in control of your own destiny, make uh, make sure your words show the value that you've given them. In podcasting, yeah. it's your spoken word, it's who you interview. And if it's just a solo pod, perfectly fine, understand where you're going. So the uh, we've, we've gone over an hour, thanks to me and my long diatribes. I, I love interviewing people and then never letting them talk. Uh, 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 um, <laughs> Well, you had the, a really uh, good point there, though. You need to do your due diligence, and you need to to like if you don't know why something went wrong, you got to look at all the things, you know, and then break that break down the information that you do have and figure out how to fix it. Because no one can tell you how to fix it. You need to first figure that out where to go on your own. Anyway, and and understand for doing a podcasting, there is a cost to entry. And it's higher than the cost to do to write a book because you can write a book, you can do your own cover and you can uh, you can do your own blurb and editing and you can publish that in podcasting. If you're going to cut a pod over to iTunes, you really do need some. There's some expenses yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that you need yeah, there's that, you and stuff that you need yeah. to get in order to be able to do that. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> well, thankfully, so, I already had this because of other stuff that I do. So yeah. I had already invested in myself via other means. And Josh is like, Hey, so you have, you have premiere then. And I'm like, I might, let me see. Yes, I do. I do have premiere. He's like, let's do this. Sweet. <laughs> Important points. I mean, if, and that's one thing I love, uh, I, I, I love talking and Oh, by the way, I have all this equipment cause I'm a narrator. Well then podcasting might be your deal. So it's, it's, what are you good at? What do you like to do? So take that and see if it's not podcasting, then don't do that. Do something else. If you like writing a, a 500 word short story or, or flash fiction, then do that and, and make a blog every single day. Hey, here's a story I was thinking of while in the shower. Went up quick 500 words I jammed in 20 minutes, no editing here. Uh, I mean, there are people who do that very, very successfully. It just is how do you relate to your readers? How do you relate to your listeners? Any final words, you guys, uh, Kayleen? Final words of finality, of which I probably should have prepared ahead of time, which I seem to never do, unlike Lauren, who is amazing. Know who you are and own it. Own yourself. That's my final word. All right. And America's favorite granddaughter, Lauren. <laughs> I hope there's people who've been thinking about podcasting out there or even just doing go lives with their readers and who now are you know ready to take that plunge. So can we just like push you over the edge? And I'm excited to see what you do. If you do start a podcast, please share that link in Keystroke Medium because I want to see it. <laughs> I would love to see that. Um, so yeah, time ticking. Get on it. Great. Thank you guys both for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Appreciate your insight into podcasting and talking about talking. I guess that's what Thank we did. Thank you for having us so, on. Thank all you. right. You guys, everybody have a great day. And we will uh, catch you 